Well, thank you for joining me today and for those of you that may be listening. Um, in our book, This Season of Angels, I put 21 questions in the back. Can angels at times appear to look like our family members? How could a demon prince spirit stop Gabriel for 21 days? Aren't angels more powerful than demons? If we sin, are angels watching us? And what happens if they are? Are angels with us continually or only during difficult seasons? Do we have authority to command angels to do assignments for us? Should an angel ever receive worship? Uh, but I want, to, I want to key up on question number eight. Now, this is only one of 21 questions that we, we de dealt with. Are some UFO sightings possibly linked with angelic activity such as Ezekiel's wheel? Now, you might, you might wonder what I'm talking about when I talk about Ezekiel's wheel. In Ezekiel chapter 1, 18 through 21, there is a verse of scripture that the prophet talks about. In fact, Ezekiel 1, 1 through 14, where the prophet of God is down by the river Kibar and he sees the northern part of the heavens open and he sees cherubim carrying the throne of God. And this is called the Merkabah. But he also notices that these cherub are very different from the cherub you read about in the Bible. Uh, most of the time, the cherubs have the face of a man. On, on, well, let me just read it. I think, I think it'd be better to read it than tell it. Um, this is Ezekiel saying, Now, as I looked at the living creatures, behold, a wheel was on the earth beside each living creature with its four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their workings was like the color of a burl, and all four had the same likeness. The appearance of their workings was, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Then it says in chapter 1, 18 through 21, as for the rims, now he's going back to the wheel that he sees in this vision, they were uh, so high, they were awesome, and their rims were full of eyes all around the four of them. When the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them, and then when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Wherefore the Spirit wanted to go, wherefore the Spirit wanted to go, they went, because there the Spirit went, and the wheels were lifted up together with them. For the Spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up together with them, for the Spirit of the living creature was in the wheel. Now, those of you who... Uh, there are people who keep up, especially on YouTube, with unidentified flying objects, with aliens. I'm not into UFOs and aliens, so let me make that, up, make that clear. However, it's something I have to study because the question get, gets asked me a lot by young people, do I think there's life on other planets? And I said yes, and they, their eyes get big. I said God and angels and Jesus is out there somewhere, so they're out there on another planet. But in reality, anything that would exist in the universe itself, whether it's our dimension or another dimensional universe, has to be created by God because there's no such thing as uh, evolution. As, as it's taught in universities and public schools. It just, it just doesn't exist. And you can get scholars of Scripture that can prove that to you, that evolution is a farce. And I, again, that's not my side subject I'm talking about now. It is my research that the saucers start appearing in the 1940s. And I have a book that's about that thick, don't even know where it is, but I've had it for years, called The German Saucer Story, in which after the war, they released pictures in this book of Germany attempting to develop a flying saucer with reverse gravity. Uh, Hitler wanted that as a spy weapon. It's believed that the U.S. may have taken that and at Area 51 actually had, and this has come out recently in unclassified documents, had a spy network established using saucer craft, uh, high-speed saucer craft. Let me just say this. Someone who worked inside the government who retired said to me, that our technology, the internet was around long before people had it. That the technology our government has is 5, 10, 15 years in advance, and 5 or 10, 15 years after they use it and develop something new, they release it to the public, like the internet and cell phones, the pictures and all that kind of thing. I believe a lot of UFOs are military. I believe that uh, some of them are um, tests that are being made with military equipment, things of that nature. I believe that's the majority. I believe some of them are hoaxes, which have been proven. But it is possible and that there are uh, angelic beings that appear. Now, this is what Ezekiel said, as a wheel within the middle of a wheel. And he also talked about that there were eyes around it. Now, he didn't know what a light bulb was or a light was back then. They only used oil lamps. And so if he would have seen uh, lights on the edge, he would have not known how to describe it other than eyes. Uh, my point is this this would not, this would be called today a UFO, but it would be called by the prophet Ezekiel a cherub. 
And I'm not saying that those saucer UFOs are cherub. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying, however, that when something appears that has no military explanation, no natural explanation, then it's got to be supernatural. And it either has to be demonic or it has to be angelic. Those are your two choices. But uh, anyway, in, in our book this season of angels, we, we, we will deal with 21 very complicated questions. Uh, we, we will talk to you about some things that people seldom talk about. How can I discern when an angel is in a room? Or how can I discern the presence of an angel? Uh, at times when an angel shows up, do I smell a fragrance? Please, uh, over 50,000 people have this book now, but I want you, if you don't have it, to go to Amazon or our ministry and get this book right now because I'm telling you, I think you, I've had people tell me they've read it several times and underlined it and marked it because of some of the real in-depth revelation that it has. So we've done three little series on this. We have some other things. In fact, I want you to walk, I want you to look at this, Snakes in Your Grave, the story of the infidel's grave. This old book that I came across in Karma, Illinois at 18 years old has one of the craziest, fascinating stories you'll ever hear. I'll, I'll do that on one of our YouTube presentations. Thank you for listening and thank you for joining me.